What's up guys, it's Carlos from Daily Carry Solutions. I'm here at Blade Show 2022 with Eric from the Outer Limitless YouTube channel at the Leon Ma Design Booth with Leon Ma himself. Hey Leon. guys, thank you for coming. Welcome, Blade 2022. Leon, I am super psyched to come by the booth. I, I can't believe we have met each other so many times and we are just now finally getting to know the lineup and, and getting some video onto the channel. So I'm really excited for that. I appreciate you guys coming by to check me out, man. It seems like it was just the right time because honestly, I see some designs that you have here that really caught my eye, but most importantly, I see some USA made designs. Yes, here. finally, okay. yeah. So let's talk, uh, let's talk shop. I know you love food, I love food. I used to be a chef, so the opportunity to ha arrive when I was able to design my own kitchen knives and White River uh, was kind enough to make this for me. It took a little while, but they have done a phenomenal job with the sculpting of the handle. This is a rich light handle, so it's stable. Uh, it makes it lightweight. The blade is uh, really thin and it's ground super thin and slicey. And it's stonewashed, so you're not going to be afraid to use it. Uh, of course, no dishwasher. <laughs> we, we, we really want to maintain our fine cutlery. And this is the five inch pairing, which is the knife I use the most in the kitchen. I never really go for the big knives unless I have like a bunch of vegetables and you know, a bunch of meat to break down. And we also paired it with a set uh, that's a 7.5 inch chef knife with the five inch pairing. Now, one thing I saw that I see is translated to the larger chef knife is uh, looking back on this one, just for reference, you have um, obviously with the, the scale and how, uh, well, uh, obviously the handle materials are designed, mm -hmm. there's obviously been some relief on both sides. Right. And I noticed that while I was holding it, two things happened. Number one, when I went ahead and I, and I put my hand on here, this little swell that you have right here towards the back of your hand really kind of goes into there and it's like it's like a little nook for them. Yes. And it feels so good when you are actually holding this in your hand. Yes. And this is crazy lightweight. Yeah. And so, aside from that, the, the pinky just kind of lands here too. So it's, it's like a perfect hand placement. Right. So uh, you described it perfectly, Carlos. So as you can see, the handle is tapered in the front. It flares out a little bit towards the two thirds of the handle. And then there are sculpt sculpted uh, curves right here to fit the meaty part of your palm and the reverse for your pinky to grab onto. So for pretty much a straight handle, you have a lot of retention and even cutting this way, but also with the pinch grip in the front and also if you're holding the knife upside down to do some peeling work. So even though this handle is straight, it really conforms to the hand and almost everyone that picks up really notices what you just pointed out with the curvature of the handle and how it is sculpted. And I think more people tend to see that because, um, and I, I fell victim to that, I mean, for many, many years up until, I mean, not too long ago. Uh, you know, we like to invest in our EDC items, yeah. but something that I always use every day as somebody who cooks, you know, the majority of the, the, the and prepares the majority of meals that I eat, is the kitchen knives. Yeah. And I felt, I was like, man, you know, investing in a good kitchen knife, for the most part, when you really look at it, most of the handles are very neutral. And you know, putting the time into put, you know, just the handle for something like this, having great materials through a, a quality, well-known, reputable USA maker, this is a step in the right direction for any, yeah. any company. And I mean, especially for a, a trade chef such as yourself. So. I totally agree. And you know, you know that the kitchen knife is some, is one of the unsung heroes mm -hmm. of the cutlery world. So a lot of guys would be like, oh, but I could pick up a whole set from like, you know, these. Uh, big box stores or something. <laughs> I'm like, okay, if that's what you want to do, great. But I, w I know that for me, I use a kitchen knife every single day. So I, I want a knife that I can really take care of and that will serve its purpose. Nice. Well, uh, in a brief departure from the, uh, the kitchen knives, we're going back to the bread and butter that we know Leon Ma for, and that's quality folders. So uh, I picked up two here. Obviously, that fat carbon really, really caught my eye, the integral handle. Uh, tell me a little bit about this model. So this is the Model 18. It would uh, celebrate my 18 years in uh, designing and the cutlery world. So I usually like to blend uh, integral with also some style from other makers. And this is more of a loveless style blade. Uh, it almost looked like a fixed blade unless you, you, you know, you fold it, 
and I was able to get S90V from Crucible uh, for this choice. These blades are hand ground, they're also satin finish, and then they're blasted to give it a subdued look on the grinds. The flipper mechanism folds inward, and but at the same time, when you deploy the flipper, the flipper disappears into the handle, and so does the top guard. So it really gives it this seamless look um, with the integral handle. You only have two screws holding on the inlaid marble carbon fiber or the fat carbon choices with the titanium clip and the ceramic ball insert. Now the reason why I choose a ceramic ball is because they don't damage your clothes when you're clipping them on. At the same time, the round ball blends into your palm. So it doesn't give a, like a jagged edge when you're, when you're gripping it. So it really blends in more with your palm and makes it very comfortable to hold. That's interesting. And, and um, Eric and I have actually talked about this with a lot of companies uh, and, and fewer these days because I think that a lot of them are, are listening to consumers more. Mm -hmm. But I think that uh, for most knife, especially newer knife designs, pocket clips seem to be an afterthought. Right. You know, and uh, for a lot of people, the majority of the time that the knife is spent is in the pocket mm -hmm. and they want to make sure that it's something that they can reliably put in, take out, and that it's not going to rip their pocket to shreds. So it's a couple of things that you have obviously solved here is obviously something that is not going to create a hot spot yep. in your hand. It's going to, you know, slip in and out of the pocket with ease. And it's something that you put a little bit more attention to which obviously from what I can see with your other knives is, is a common thing here at Leon Mall. So yeah. That's great to hear. It's, it's one of the areas that I feel uh, is I focus more time on uh, in the overall design is the pocket clip because I know that if it's, if the clip is uncomfortable I won't take it. I won't take it and, and carry it every single day and then to use it will be even worse. So for me I all my knives have slightly different clips just because from handle to handle, the same clip would not make sense. Mm. I totally understand that, yeah. And I can totally appreciate that too. Uh, there's just something about just the overall look on this knife, especially that, that integral, uh, you know, that, that uh, one piece handle with that inlay that, you know, like you said, in the carbon fiber shred or the, uh, the fat carbon, gives it that little pop, especially that fat carbon. I mean, yeah. that is a looker. Uh, I know a lot of companies are starting to use it now and I'm glad because it looks great and I yeah. hope they use more. Uh, it'd be nice to see some new variants, but I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm just really glad to go ahead and see that translating to I, one of I'm very signs. happy for the fat carbon uh, material too. They're also here at Blaze Show and I told them I'm going to be there just to take whatever they have left. <laughs> because uh, for a long time, I mean, you know, everybody likes black knives, right? Yeah. But at the same time, a little pop of color really adds so much to the design. And nowadays, I, I purposely don't do black knives because I've dropped knives before. Mm -hmm. And then try to find a, drop, a knife that you dropped as black. <laughs> it's a little difficult. Yeah. <laughs> well, and also, you know, I think that, that with black knives, I mean, uh, you know, they are very popular, but it's turned into kind of like the, the operator aspect. And right. I think something like this, you know, when you have that, it, it, it allows the aesthetics to shine, you know, not only in the design, but, you know, what you've chosen to go ahead and place on there as well with the back carpet. So beautiful. Now, um, we've seen some really nice lookers. We've seen some, you know, uh, duty knives in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, how about these over here to the side? These look like these are more geared towards uh, people that, that want something, you know, a little bit more basic, but that will do that job right. and do it reliably. So this is my new line called Eutectic. This was introduced at SHOT Show this year, and I finally received some uh, product to sell. So the samples that you saw at SHOT Show were samples, and then we went back and we saw, I asked the manufacturer, okay, what else can we do because I didn't want like a big logo on the blade. Mm -hmm. So I did the, the, uh, the logo on the pivot, which is something that Civivi have done and other companies have done. And uh, I just wanted a very clean look. Now these are made out of D2 steel, stainless hardware, stainless liner, stainless clip, and micarta handles. We have orange, forest green, and black. And they come in at 3.6 ounces. And that's something that I can have in my pocket all day, and it's a full-size knife, and it's really fidget-friendly. So that's the flipper, front flipper, and thumb hole. 
and I see that the uh, the liners have been skeletonized. I mm -hmm. mean, to, even though it's not a very heavy knife to begin yeah. with, obviously, you know, adding that relief there kind of reduces the, the weight a little bit, and it gives you the opportunity to kind of uh, save a little bit of that that uh, weight and really right. real estate in the pocket. So, well, I, li nice. I, I live in Florida, so I, I'm I usually wear lightweight clothing anyway. Okay, um, right. and I wouldn't want like a pocket brick in my in my in my pocket, <laughs> you know. That's that's totally understandable. And the blade is uh, 0 0.145 uh, thickness. Behind that edge, uh, okay. So that we ground it really thin for the, to be able to slice very well, like all my other knives. Very nicely done. And like you said, I mean, with the deployment message, <laughs> uh, you have that thumb hole right there that you can access. You have the uh, the front flipper. Oh, <laughs> no worries. There we go. And I then was... you have the standard flipper. Yep. You're good. I always tell people when they're doing the front flipper, don't think about it, and you'll be fine. Because the the minute That's a good way to think about it. the minute you think <laughs> about it, because you get all self-conscious, you really will not do it. All right. So um, now this last design looks very very familiar. So this Am is I the cuff four, and this is the cuff three, and these uh these came out last year. They are G10 monoblock and carbon fiber monoblock with a titanium frame lock, titanium clip, LMAX steel blade, and I would like you to grip this knife really hard in your right hand because it's a right hand knife. Okay. What do you feel? Honestly, it, I don't feel any flex. I don't feel anything. It's just it's it's. Uh and the clip blends into your palm. Yeah, there's something. It it usually the clip will will create a hot spot like right here. Yeah. The clip kind of is positioned in a way to where it's it sits a little bit farther back into yeah. more of a recess inside of the meat, yeah. the hand. So I feel as if like it's it's just it, you don't feel that hot spot. Yes. You know you wouldn't feel that. Okay, yeah. so I get that. All right. So that's one of the things that I was like so happy with with the design that. I was able to create a knife that the clip just blend it into the hollow of your palm and really like give you a very comfortable grip. And then we, we uh, contoured the back and it's three dimensionally contoured so that there are no hot spots created. Uh, that's actually really nice. And you know, also when it comes to machining and tooling, uh, especially with uh, you know holes in the blade, you tend to have some sharp edges. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that here, you know, you just, you don't feel that. It's like no. that, that little extra detail, you know? Uh, I guess separating the ordinary and the extraordinary is that little extra, right? Just a little bit. And the way the blade is ground with the flat grind, it kind of makes the top part thicker. And then the bottom part is all uh, in an angle, chiseled down. Mm -hmm. This way you get the most, the most uh, metal up here for the thumb to be able to open the, the blade up. Very nice. But they're so uh, flickable. Like I, I usually open this with my index finger, mm -hmm. uh, reverse, and it's like more fun than just using your thumb to open it. Great. Well, I gotta tell you, I mean, it seems like I'm gonna have my hands full when it comes to dealing with you now, and I'm gonna have to start returning again, because you guys, hey, man, Leo Ma has, has got it going on here at Blade Show. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're more than welcome. Come back anytime, and I really appreciate your support. Thank you. Likewise, thank you for coming out with great designs and have a great rest of your show. Thank you so much. Thanks, Carlos.